Hey guys, it's Public, and welcome to the 7.3.2 Shadow Priest Guide. Now, it's been a while since I've done anything, uh, partially due to me moving and doing a few other things with a new job, but also not a whole lot's changed with Shadow Priest in the past several months. Um, we are on patch 7.3.2 now, so we do have some things. So in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know at a fundamental level for Shadow Priest in a raiding environment. This includes talents, rotation, gearing, legendaries included. And in addition, we're going to go over a few other things uh, like relics and the crucible system, things like that. So, and if you have any questions on the tier, hopefully I have a chance to answer um, tier questions as well. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So the first thing I want to cover in this video is what has changed with Shadow Priest since my last guy, which I believe was 7.2.5. So believe it or not, we haven't actually had that many changes. The only reason I needed to make a new video was because we now have new tier set, a few new items, things like that. So we'll go over this real quick. Um, recently, there was a hotfix that applied some changes to Shadow Priest. Um, this is going to sound bad, and it's not terrible. I'll say that. Uh, they nerfed Vampiric Touch and Shadow Ward Pain Damage by 12%, which they were our two most hitting abilities, so that definitely hurts. Um, however, to compensate from that, they increased all other abilities by 3%. So 3% buff to everything but our dots. Um, this comes out to be a slight nerf overall, but the goal here was to reduce our reliance on dots for our damage. So it actually ends up being pretty decent overall. It's not a huge nerf bat. It's very, very reasonable, and we're still very competitive after these changes, which is great. Um, two new items that we really care about um, are uh, legendaries specifically. We haven't had any new class spec-specific legendaries as of the game, but we do have two new ones. The first one is Insignia of the Grand Army. This guy is a kind of freebie legendary that you get from completing the Antorus campaign, I believe, is kind of what starts it. But anyways, you basically kill Argus in the new raid, and you get this ring as a reward. Um, I won't explain too much about what the ring does. You can see it increases um, gains you get from the Crucible, specifically your Tier 2 slot in the Crucible. If you're not sure what the Crucible is or what that means for Shadow Priest, don't worry, it'll go over that in just a bit. The other new legendary, and I say legendary because it's it's only legendary in that it has the same color. Um, this is Amon Thules. This is one of the new Pantheon trinkets, which again I'll go over trinkets a little bit later. But what you need to know here is this is a legendary trinket that drops off of, again, Argus, the last boss in the new raid. You have a chance of getting it once per week, um, regardless of difficulty, so that means you can't kill it on Normal, heroic, and mythic to get a chance at the trinket. But excuse me, as you can see, it looks amazing. It's basically a really, really high eye level arcano crystal. Which, if you've been following Shadow Priest, you know it's been one of our best trinkets since the game came out. So, um, why why I say it's not really a legendary is that it actually doesn't take up a legendary slot. So you can use Amon Thules with two other legendaries, having a total of three, which is kind of why it's even better for Shadow Priest specifically, so we can still use the two legendaries we care about. So, um, And again, we'll talk about more Pantheon trinkets later if you have questions on what that means. And one of the big things which kind of led me to make this video in the first place was we have a new tier. And with the new tier, we have a new tier set, which is tier 21. So if you're not sure what it is, um, there aren't really any playstyle changes associated with it, mostly just damage. Um, so we'll go over this real quick. The two piece is Mind Flay and Mind Blast Critical Strike bonus damage increased by 50%. So this doesn't mean that Mind Flay and Mind Blast crit more often. It just means when they do crit, they do more damage with that crit. Um, the two piece is actually pretty solid overall. It's one of the better ones. Uh, we actually have a pretty decent set bonus in terms of damage. Um, but we'll kind of get into it in just a second. And then our four pieces, each stack of Void Form increases the critical strike chance of Mind Flay, Void Bolt, and Mind Blast by half a percent. Um, which, again, is stacking, right? So while we're at the end of our Void Form, we have um, roughly about a 30% increase, give or take, um, which is pretty nice. So... Uh, yeah, that's that's our new tier 21 set. It sounds a little interesting, but um, as you'll see in a bit, it's not the most lucrative thing in the world, and we'll kind of get in that in just a bit. But before we go any further, let's go over talents that we want to use in this next raid. All right, so the next thing we're going to cover is talents, like I said. So I'm not going to spend too much time in this section, mainly because as the expansion has gone along, 
our talent choices have become more limited, so there's not too much to discuss here. So I'm just going to kind of go down the list here and tell you what we will be using in this new raid and why. So first up is Twist of Fate. This is still our default choice for everything. We're not changing this. Um, the only time you ever don't take Twist of Fate is when you're using the Soul of the High Priest Legendary. At this point, you will take Fortress of the Mind and then get Twist of Fate. So we'll go over that ring specifically and when you use that Legendary later in the video, so don't worry about that. Next up is kind of our movement utility tier. Uh, this is very personal preference. Um, most Shadow Priests lean on taking body and soul here, but Mania has also seen a lot of decent use. So if you prefer the Mania style, by all means go for it. In terms of DPS, it doesn't matter. Um, as we continue on for raiding, we're going to want to take Mind Bomb. This is still kind of our default choice. Having an AoE stun on a 30 second cooldown is amazing. Not to mention it really helps us with proccing Cephas. So you'll pretty much take this all the time in all scenarios. Next up, we have Lingering Insanity. This is still our default. Uh, ever since it got added and replaced its old option, we're taking it all the time. And that doesn't change. What I will say, though, as a small caveat, is if you've done Antorus, you know, there is a single fight that kind of makes Lingering Insanity feel bad. And what I mean by that is um, Lingering Insanity gives you the value in between your void forms, right? Um, and a little bit at the start of the next one. Specifically, the fight Imminar the Soul Hunter, as you can see going on in the background now, when you transition, you're basically transitioning in between void forms. Uh, depending on your kill times. So there is a chance you might not take this talent depending on how you're killing the boss. Um, but again, that, that is very, very dependent on how the boss dies. If that does happen, you'll probably lean towards taking Void Ray, but it's hard to say. Logs have yet to really show that that is an increase, but it is something to keep in mind. So, And as we go forward, we the only option we have in the next tier is Auspicious Spirits. We used to also take Sand Land for certain things, but at this point, Sand Land and Shadow Insight are both off the table completely. We're taking Auspicious Spirits all the time. All right, and our next row, this is, again, pretty default. Um, nothing's really changed here. We're still taking Mindbender to do the Mindbender build with the one-minute void form cycle. If you're not sure what that means, we're going to cover rotation in just a second, so stay tuned. Now, I will give a little bit of a caveat here. If you're on a case of a fight like ENR or Mythic Dungeons, for example, you could take Misery, which is another option. Um, so for the most part, uh, Mindbender is your go-to. If you're in a situation like ENR, which is a very random, chaotic ads fight that has a weird purpose, um, Misery is actually a pretty solid option. There's not really a boss to tunnel, and Mindbender's value is giving you that one-minute void form, which isn't really a possibility on ENR for anything. So for the most part, you can go ahead and take Misery for that fight, but all other 10 fights in the instance, go, go Mindbender, sorry. And our last tier, we've seen a lot of changes to this, but for the most part, nothing has really changed. Legacy of the Void is still going to be your default go-to talent. I will mention Shadow Crash here. It did get several buffs um, over the course of things, but... Uh, it's really nothing substantial for raiding. You can use Shadow Crash for raiding. It can be better if you're under high movement scenarios. But again, that's kind of dependent on how you're able to handle mechanics and you have to make sure it will actually hit the targets it's going to hit. So we haven't really seen a fight where this makes sense. Again, maybe ENR, but that fight's kind of silly anyways. So. So for most things, you're going to want to take Legacy of the Void. I, I will say as a decent call out, again, if things are like a very, very heavy movement, um, especially single target heavy movement, you could see an increase by taking Shadow Crash. But again, you can kind of reduce the amount of movement by planning for mechanics. So, and not really here. So you're going to want to pretty much take Legacy of the Void still. And of course, we still have Surrender to Madness, which hasn't really changed too much in the fact that they're still kind of ignoring it. I will say with our dots getting nerfed uh, a few times, this does kind of reduce the value that we get from Surrender to Madness substantially. So for the most part, you only still take this talent when you're on super, super farm and bosses are only living for like one or two void forms, which is around like a two minute boss fight. So if you're at that point in farm, you want to play around with it, go for it. But as far as progression is considered, Surrender to Madness will not be considered. All right. So that was pretty quick, didn't want to go over too much, but next up is going to be the rotation section. Alright, so the next thing we're going to cover is the rotation for Shadow Priest. So 
Um, again, like I said before, nothing has really changed here with the rotation. It's more dependent on your gear to make sure that you can complete the rotation. So um, if you've played a Shadow Priest before, you know that we've been kind of talking about this thing called the one minute cycle. Um, what that means is we want to be able to sustain void form for roughly 50 to 55 seconds. And what this means is uh, we're basically in void form every minute uh, for almost a full minute. So if you're in void form for 55 stacks, 55 seconds, that means by the time you get into your next void form, it'll be about a minute because it takes you about five to 10 seconds to get back into void form depending on mechanics you have to handle, et cetera, et cetera. So that is still our goal. And to complete that goal, we're using Mindbender and Void Torrent specifically every void form. So just know that that's kind of your, your end goal is that. And again, staying in void form as long as possible. Kind of the same thing. So first things first, when you're out of void form, what's your priority look like? Um, for the most part, you, you can follow this priority list pretty easily. Um, it's going to be keep Mind Blast off cooldown. Um, so what this means is, or sorry, on cooldown, use Mind Blast all the time. Then we want to keep dots up on the target. Use one of your two charges of Shadow Word Death. That way we save one for later when we actually need it in void form. And then Mind Flay is kind of your filler spell. You can also dot other targets during this time as well, but you want to kind of focus that on your single target. And then as soon as you get to your 65 Insanity with Legacy of the Void or 100 with Shadow Crash if you're taking it, then go into void form immediately. Um, and once you're in void form, this is where kind of the magic starts to happen. You're going to use Void Torrent on cooldown. Um, there is some shenanigans you can do with saving Void Torrent, but for now, let's assume you're going to use Void Torrent on cooldown as soon as you get into Void Form. Now, after that, your number one spell is Void Bolt. Always cast Void Bolt on cooldown. This is crucial. Not only does it generate our most insanity of any other spell, it also um, extends our dots, uh, the duration of our dots, so we don't have to keep recasting it on that one target. And um, after that, we're going to keep Mind Blast on cooldown. Then we're going to kind of use Shadow Word Death uh, sparingly. It actually generates the same amount of insanity as Mind Blast. So in that sense, its value is pretty equal. However, the set bonus does favor Mind Blast more than Death. Um, so you, kind of, you would rather use your Mind Blast charges first in that sense. Um, but you want to keep at least one charge of Shadow Word Death ticking at all times. And use your second charge of Shadow Word Death for movement or when you really need the insanity later on your void form and then at the end just like before you're going to use mind flay as your filler um, and this this is pretty much the same thing as it was before now i will mention the the kind of main idea with the rotation you can kind of see me in the background playing uh, in the raid is to fit two spells in between every void bolt cast and this is kind of your bread and butter as a shadow priest so uh, for example you do maybe Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Mind Flay. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, and Mind Flay. I mean, or maybe Void Bolt, Long Mind Flay. Um, things like that. And then if you keep that, that's basically you executing the rotation perfectly. Um, now with one caveat there, once you get above about 140% haste, which I know is a lot, um, then you, it's only one spell in between every Void Bolt approximately. Um, this is kind of more of a fluid point of like 140 to 150% haste, but it does happen occasionally. Not so much as it used to since we're not taking Surrender to Madness, but especially when you have Bloodlust in the opener or whenever else, if you get Lust or you have a Cephas proc, you can actually hit this point uh, fairly regularly. So keep that in mind. Now, um, like I mentioned before, Mindbender is the key here. This is our, our only cooldown we really have to manage um, that we're not using on cooldown. So with Mindbender, your goal is to use it at around 30 stacks. By casting it at 30 stacks, that pretty much guarantees if you're executing the rotation well, you'll stay in until about 50 to 55 stacks, depending on mechanics you have to handle. And that's our goal. Um, now, that's only achievable if you have a certain level of haste with your gear. So if you're using, if you're still using tier 24 piece, the amount of haste you need to make that work is about 12,000 haste, uh, which is fairly attainable, especially with normal heroic and Taurus level gear, if that's where you're at. Now, if you don't have tier 24 piece or you're using tier 21 four piece, 
then it, things are a little different. Instead of needing about 12,000 haste, well now you need about 16,000 haste, um, which is a significant amount more, I totally understand. So, uh, and this is kind of the rough point where you can use Bender at about 30 stacks. You'll find if you don't have quite enough haste, you'll need to use Mind Bender slightly earlier to stay in void form. So if you're in that case, you should do that. Don't sacrifice your void form's length just to cast it at Mindbender at 30 stacks. If you need to cast it a little early, that's fine, especially if you have any Mindbender relics. There are relics that increases the duration of Mindbender by one and a half seconds. So that kind of gives you a buffer to handle mechanics a bit more or not be so perfect with your void form and not suffer dire consequences for it. So kind of use that as your goal to aim for. And I'll talk more about the tier 20, tier 21 set bonus nonsense in just a bit, but let's focus on the rotation a bit more. So a couple of the tips that I want to go over is that you generally speaking don't want to shoot for double void torrent. It's not like a, a hard goal that you want to hit, mainly because if you hit double void torrent, usually it means the following void form, your void torrent will be really, really late, and that actually could cause you to miss the one minute cycle. So if you're gonna do that, be very cautious. Um, this kind of goes with the, the mantra of using void torrent on cooldown, just because, generally speaking, using void torrent twice is better than using it once later in void form as well. So kind of use that to your advantage and just use it on cooldown for the most part. If you're having trouble maintaining the cycle, specifically with tier 21, um, some people have found that delaying Void Torrent until about 10 stacks or so can help you sustain the Void Form even if you don't quite have enough haste. So it's a, another thing you can kind of play with. But again, that's a very small delay of about 5 to 10 seconds, so which isn't a super big deal. Now the other thing is with your uh, tentacle procs, which I, which is one of the artifact abilities, you can also delay and move around cooldowns as well with tentacle procs. That's something you're interested in. I'll link in the description kind of a more advanced playstyle written guide that someone on the How to Priest team has done for you, and you can kind of go over that a little bit if you're curious. So I will say, without the tier 24 set specifically, including using tier 21 you will notice um, the, the cycle being harder to maintain. If you ever screw up a void form and you're, you're suddenly out of void form, but Mindbender is actually still attacking or it still has a lot of duration left on its cooldown, you should delay going into void form until Mindbender's cooldown is back to about 30 seconds remaining. So let me give you an example. If you fall out of void form and Mindbender's cooldown is at about 35 seconds, um, and you're like, oh, should I go into void form? Should I wait? Wait. That five seconds that you wait will be absolutely worth it. So once you see that its remaining du duration on the cooldown is about 30 seconds, then you can go into void form because we want to aim for a 30 stack mind bender. So kind of maintain that planning as much as you can. Don't just throw a void form out of the window. That's not worth it. It's better to wait for a few seconds than to do that. All right. And the last thing that I kind of want to go over is that you should absolutely, absolutely dot as many targets as you possibly can in addition to sniping Twist of Fate on low health adds, including using Shadow or Death to do so. So let's say you're on a fight like Portal Keeper, for example, and they're little imps out. You should absolutely try to get Shadow or Death casts on the imps when they're at low health to get your Twist of Fate and to use some Shadow or Death charges that you wouldn't have otherwise. All right, so that's a very general overview of the rotation. Please watch some of the background footage to kind of see how that works in practice, all right? So now the big thing that we're gonna go over here next is gearing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go over in this guide is gearing. This is actually gonna be a pretty lengthy section, so hopefully I cover everything. But again, there is a lot of information out there, so if you feel like I, you don't quite understand something fully, there's a lot of links that I'm gonna put in the description around gearing in general that you should absolutely check out for hard resources. So your general stat priority when it comes to gearing is haste, crit, and then versatility. It's kind of equal to mastery in that sense, but for the most part, they're, they're similar. And then intellect is gonna be our last stat. Now, like I mentioned before, there is kind of um, points of haste that you wanna maintain. So I'll kind of reiterate that real quick. With tier 21 Ford piece, you want between 15 to 17,000 haste, depending on how comfortable you are with the rotation. So if you're less comfortable executing that one minute void form, maybe go with 
edge on the side of having more haste. If you're very confident in it, you can shift closer to the 15,000 haste mark with tier 21. Now, if you don't have tier 21 four piece and you don't have tier 24 piece, the haste number is actually the same. Tier 21 doesn't change how easy it is to maintain the cycle for the most part. Um, so you can pretty much leave that exactly the same. Now, if you're using tier 20 four piece still, which is our old set bonus from Tomb of Sargeras, you only need about 11 to 13,000 haste with the same restraints there. The set bonuses themselves are actually very, very close. Um, so kind of giving an example, if you're using tier 24 piece and you have 12,000 haste, you'll actually notice that it is slightly better than tier 21 can at equal eye level. Um, and same thing, tier 21 at high haste is about equal to tier 20 at the low haste mark. So what this means is you should choose the set bonus if you have the choice based on your gear. If you can make tier 21 work because you have a lot of haste, you should use tier 21, mainly because tier 21 will drop at higher eye level and we want more stats. So eventually, specifically when you get like a 15 eye level gap on all set pieces towards tier 21, use tier 21. Until then, or until you get enough haste, stick with tier 20. Using tier 21 four piece without enough haste to sustain the one minute void form cycle is not worth it. It's a huge DPS loss to do so. Don't feel bad keeping tier 24 piece until that happens. It's totally fine. You're not really losing damage at that point. So just keep that in mind. Now, to help you kind of choose your gear sets, you can use an add-on called Pawn, which I've gone over in the past, um, to kind of get stat weights for your character to determine if this piece of gear is better than this piece of gear. Um, and there are pawn strings linked in the description on the stat weights preview post that one of the authors, uh, uh, staff members at How to Priest wrote. In addition, um, a lot of people suggest you should sim yourself to get your stat weights. That is something that you can absolutely do if you feel confident in it. However, if you're only simming yourself on patchwork, like single target sims, you're not getting the full picture of a Shadow Priest's desired stats. So what I'll say is, if you aren't comfortable with simming yourself, it's totally fine to just use the resources we have in the pins. They're pretty much good up until like 95 plus percent. It's, it's very, very accurate for most things that you're gonna wanna do. If you wanna min-max to the finest degree, you can use a tool called Magic Sim, which basically sims your character, uh, I think 36 different times with different scenarios and stuff like that and it's weighted against Antorus fights um, and the, the kinds of fights that you see in Antorus. So you can use that as kind of a, a, a more advanced sim, if you will, to get better and more accurate stat weights for your character. And again, all of this is linked in the description below. All right, so without further ado, that's kind of it with uh, stats and stat weights and things like that. I want to go over relics real quick. So um, you'll see an image coming up now with kind of your desired... Um, relics that you want to go over. Um, with this new patch, we've been able to empower our artifact with something called the Crucible. Now, the Crucible is kind of an interesting thing. Um, it basically means every relic that drops has two additional traits. Um, one of the traits is a, a new one. This is called our Tier 2 traits. And we also have a Tier 3 traits, which is just kind of a, a mimic of the old traits that we have, only an additional one. So, um, there's, there's an add-on called the Crucible Weight add-on that helps you kind of determine which uh, options you should pick. But one thing I want to make very, very clear, when you pick an option, it's permanent. And when you look at a relic in the Crucible, that relic is now soul bound to you. So before you make your choice, be very, very sure that's the one that you want to do. So you'll see a chart coming up now with our kind of relic priorities. Um, and as you can see, there not a whole lot's changed with our old relics. Um, we're kind of going to lean towards fiending dark traits as much as possible. Secondary to that, we're going to look at things that affect our dots and shadow damage specifically. So the shadow damage relic, uh, vampiric touch, and shadow pain relics are kind of the ones we want to aim for. But they're all very, very close together within a half percent or so. So don't fret too much if you don't get the best trait for everything. It's not a super, super huge deal. Now there's also um, one thing I want to mention with this is... With Fiending Dark and Unleash the Shadows specifically, the traits actually have a point where they stop giving you as much value. This is kind of subjective on how good you are at maintaining Void Form, but for the most part, if you're, let's assume for a second that you can execute the one minute cycle perfectly with your current gear, 
And as you can see, after you get more traits of Fiending Dark, the value of it goes down slightly. The Crucible Way add-on takes this into account, so don't worry, you don't have to manually figure this out if you don't want to. And with Unleash the Shadows, something similar here, but the trait actually goes over 100% crit chance for the relic, uh, the, the actual trait, which effectively doesn't do anything. So after you get above that point, the relic's value is like basically cut in half. So keep that in mind there. So if you're if all this is very new to you and you've just started your shot appreciation, you're like, I have no idea what the crucible is, what's happening. If you're still trading out your artifact into the different rows, it doesn't take too long, but if you want a full guide, check out the written shadow guide on how to priest, which is linked in the description for a full trait path to follow. Okay, so more gearing stuff. We also want to cover legendaries in this guide. So uh, I'm not going to go over every single legendary like I've done in the past, um, but there is a chart I'll put up now to kind of give you a quick look at what is our kind of tier list for legendaries. Now you'll notice that there is a low haste and a high haste build for legendaries. This is actually completely intended. Um, depending on your haste, you'll notice different values of legendaries shift. Excuse me. Specifically, Cephas and the uh, the belt will shift significantly based on how much haste you have, um, in addition to a few others. So, if you're um, shifting towards the lower side of haste, around twelve thousand, you want to look at uh, that the low haste chart. If you're kind of at the high haste, then you can look at which is like the sixteen thousand range. Look at the high haste range. Now, all of these values are with tier twenty one four piece. If you're still using tier twenty four piece. Go back and look at the older resources we have on the channel. Those are still accurate, um, and you can still follow those for basic guidance as far as that goes. Now, like I said, we do have two new legendaries, which is Insignia and Amon Thules. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Amon Thules is kind of your go-to everything. It doesn't affect your two legendaries that you can use, so if you can get your hands on it, you should absolutely use it. Our other legendary is Insignia of the Grand Army. This legendary can actually perform pretty well. It drops at eye level 1000, so if you're just kind of picking up the game again, you'll kind of get it as a free eye level 1000 legendary, which makes it pretty powerful until you've upgraded your other ones. Um, in terms of its strength for Shadow Priest, it's directly related to what your Crucible traits are, because that's what it increases, right? So with the legendary post linked in the description, there's actually a, a calculator to help you determine how good the uh, Insignia legendary is for your character. Um, so if you have three Shadowbind traits, which is considered your best in slot Crucible traits, um, then Insignia actually performs very well, almost equal to the belt um, in a sim, right? So that's something to keep in mind there. So you can play around with it if you have good traits. Otherwise, it's kind of iffy right now as far as our tier list goes the top legendaries that you want to aim for is going to be the belt and Cephas secret these were our go-to back in tomb they are still our go-to nothing's changed too much so as far as uh the value of the belt it's pretty self-explanatory it's it's more mind blast casts um, which is great especially with our new tier 21 set bonus and then Cephas secret we still love haste we love multiplicative haste things like that and it's both the belts and Cephas that allow us to hit our haste goals. So if you don't have the belt and you don't have Cephas, hitting that 16k haste mark is actually not enough haste. If you don't have both of those legendaries, you'll actually need more haste to sustain the void form cycle. So getting these legendaries is pretty crucial to play a Shadow Priest, good or bad. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the two you want to aim for. Now the other two that are also very, very competitive are the legendary shoulders and Soul of the High Priest. These legendaries also help us sustain our one minute void form cycle, um, but they're not quite as good. So these are kind of your good backups to use. Um, so specifically the legendary shoulders, when you're using them kind of, everything I've talked about stacks before, you're gonna shift up by two. Um, so you start void form with three stacks instead of one stack. So everything is kind of shifted by two. So instead of using Mindbender at around 30 stacks, use it around 32 stacks with the shoulders. And it's effectively giving you two stacks of haste and crit with the four piece, um, which is kind of the value in this legendary. Now, the Soul of the High Priest legendary is specifically only good when paired with the legendary belt. It has a very good synergy in that sense. So if you don't have the belt, it's really not good to use this, but using belt plus Soul of the High Priest can be 
equal to using belt cephas and even slightly better on very very pure single target encounters so that's something you can play around with if you want however cephas does give you um, movement speed which is really really helpful for handling mechanics so kind of keep that in mind i wouldn't necessarily recommend using soul of the high priest over cephas just my personal standpoint um, but if you have tier 21 four piece and you're on single target you can totally experiment if you feel so inclined now, if it wasn't obvious, with Soul of the High Priest, you should always be taking Fortress of the Mind as your second talent. Um, never take Shadow Word Void. It's just very, very behind in that sense. All right, so that pretty much covers Legendaries. Like I said, if you have any other questions, look at the post in the description below. Now, I'll cover Trinkets real quick. Um, we still want to target Trinkets from the new raid. However, if you're still using Terror or Owl from the previous raid, those are still great Trinkets. Um, in addition to Thurible, um, TOS dropped really good trinkets for us, and that still holds true if you have them at high eye level. However, eventually you'll get higher eye level trinkets from the new raid. Specifically, like I mentioned before, you want to get Amonthul's Vision, which is one of the Pantheon trinkets. The other Pantheon trinket is Norganans. Um, so now these Pantheon trinkets are unique equipped, which means you can only use Amonthul's or Norganans. Like I said before, these trinkets drop off of Argus, the final boss. You have a chance of getting it once per week. Um, and only one difficulty a week can't get it twice, or can't get a chance of getting it twice. So as far as using Amonthul's, if you get it, absolutely. Use it immediately without hesitation. Um, and it drops at eye level 1000. The Norganin's trinket, which is the other Pantheon trinket, drops at eye level 940. But every week that you kill Argus after week one, I believe, you get this thing that upgrades it by 10 item levels so eventually it'll be um i think it's 10 item, it might be five can't, can't remember but um regardless getting it to drop at base aisle might not be better than some of the trinkets you have until more people in the raid use the trinket so it's kind of a hard thing to really say but if you're kind of have bad trinkets you'll probably use it immediately but if you have very very good trinkets you can probably hold off using it until more people in your raid have these pantheon trinkets because um, with enough people in the raid to proc the trinket, there's a secondary effect that is actually pretty powerful. So if your raid is in the situation where you are one of the people that have the trinket and you want to help using it to get the group proc, you should absolutely do that. It's a very raid-wide damage boost that's very, very effective. Um, or if it gets high enough eye level. I mean, if there's, a, if there's a big enough gap, you should absolutely use it. And speaking of uh, eye level gaps, there's a trinket chart coming up now, which will also be linked in the post in the description to kind of help you determine which trinkets are an upgrade and which ones aren't based on eye level. But you do want to target, like I said, one of the Pantheon trinkets, preferably Amonthul's. The other trinket that you want to get is Acrid Catalyst Injector, which drops off of Kingaroth. Um, so this is definitely your go-to trinket you want to try rolling for and getting. The other trinkets I'll make note of are the Prototype Personal Decimator from the first boss, which is great for um, AoE encounters and even single target because it has haste, which is great for us. It's also pretty decent for Mythic Plus as well. And the other one is the Terminus Signaling Beacon, which is great for Mythic Plus or clumped AoE. So I'll use uh, this trinket for things like ENR or Portal Keeper or even uh, High Command if you need uh, add damage. And one thing I do want to say is the Sheath of Asara trinket from Coven is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, it, under no circumstances should you use it. It's just has a terrible like mechanic. It's hard to aim. It's just sometimes it misses. It's just a very, very bad trinket. I know it looks kind of like a thurible in a way, but not a trinket you want to be using under any circumstances. Um, next up with kind of the gearing thing, I want to go over um, enchants real quick. So... This has not changed. You still want to use Haste everywhere. Still use Mark of the Claw for your neck enchant. That is all the same. Use the Int uh, enchant for your cloak. That is all the same. Just wanted to make that clear. All right, so I hope this answers all your questions with gearing. If you have any questions that I did not answer here, like I said, check out the resources in the description. Hopefully these go over everything in more detail to have answered your questions. This, If they don't answer your questions fully, please feel free to leave a comment on this video or ping me in Discord or on the forums. I'd be happy to answer your questions. All right, guys, that does it for this guide. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with the next one very soon.